Praise the Lord. And welcome to yet another edition of our series of daily broadcasts, which we have tagged the State of the Union. The union that is between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we are still about the business of the word of the Lord saying, tell my people to return to me. Tell my people to return to me. Hmm. You know, in saying, tell my people to return to me, by implication, Jesus is saying that his people have walked away from him. Now, back in the day, that same statement would be a reference primarily, specifically to the Jews. My people. So let us open today with a question. Why was it that the Jews could not recognize the Messiah? Put another way. All things considered, was it not a bit hypocritical that the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, whatever, that the Jews failed to recognize Jesus? So what really was the problem? You see, because if my people had been with me, then they would have been able to recognize Jesus at least. Now here's why the question becomes relevant. In Acts chapter 17, the Bible says that Paul went into the, starting from verse 1 that is, it says that Paul went into the synagogue of the Jews and for a space of about two years or so, he reasoned with them out of the scriptures that Christ must needs have suffered and then died and be risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus that I preach unto you is Christ. That's Acts 17, 1, 2, 3. Well, the Jews in Thessalonica essentially refused what he was saying. But then he gets to Beria, and we start that from about verse 10. Beria, not burial ground, B-E-R-E-A, Beria, or Bibia. And the Bible says in verse 11 of Acts chapter 17, that the Jews in Beria were more noble than the Jews in Thessalonica, in that they searched the scriptures daily to see if what Paul and Co were preaching was true. And then the Bible goes on to say that many of them believed, many of their women, and certain of the priests as well gave their lives to Jesus, that is. So here's the question, again, same question. The Bible tells us that the apostles preached Christ from the scriptures. What scriptures? The very same scriptures that the Jews had all the time. The very same scriptures in which we see that God says concerning Abraham when he said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I do? For I trust the man, I know that he will teach his children and his household after him about me. Now that was the beginning of Abraham and his descendants 
transmitting the story about God from generation to generation. Abraham started the business of teaching it to family. Now, by the time he got to the law, the law and therefore the time of Moses, that behavior of Abraham had become institutionalized in the law such that it became a commandment of God to teach these things to the children. That every time they celebrated or commemorated any of the feasts and the children asked them for an explanation about what they were doing, they were to relate to the children the story behind the feasts. How God delivered them from Egypt. And then the law goes on to say that they should bind the law to their forehead, to their hands, as it were. So we know that every Jewish family had something of a tradition in the business of the reading of the law. Let's call that the scriptures. So they knew the scriptures. They knew the scriptures to the point that they knew that the Messiah was going to be king. Otherwise, where did they get the idea from of trying to make Jesus king? They had already accepted him as Messiah. Those ones who wanted to make him king, that is. They already accepted him as Messiah. But somehow they misunderstood Isaiah chapter 9. Where it says that the government shall be on his shoulders. And they wanted to literally put the government on his shoulders as king. So they understood that from the scriptures. They understood certain other things from the scriptures. The apostles preached Christ from the scriptures. Paul, for example, was not a direct disciple of Jesus. Certainly not when Jesus was here on earth. But he learned Christ from the scriptures. So he was able to preach Christ from the scriptures. That's why everywhere he went, the Bible says, he reasoned, from, he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Showing them in the scriptures the revelation about Christ. Now, if you are interested enough and you Google it, the Messianic prophecies, you will discover that the person we call Christ now, Jesus, fulfilled several of the Old Testament prophecies. The Jews knew about those prophecies. It was from those prophecies that the apostles preached Christ, identifying Jesus as the Christ in that several of those scriptures were fulfilled in him. And when they searched the scriptures and saw that it was truly so, they believed. Now, knowing that these things were in their scriptures, I mean the Jewish leaders now, why were they not able, from the scriptures which they knew so well, in quotes, why were they not able to recognize Jesus? All they had to do was investigate. And they would see that even by his birth, he had already started to fulfill certain scriptures. The nature of his birth, his birthplace. The fellow who referred to Jesus as thou son of David, the blind man. And Jesus asked him, what do you want? And he said, I want to see. Why did he refer to Jesus as the son of David? So how come the commoners understood that that guy had to be the Messiah that they were expecting? John certainly knew, albeit by revelation. So what was the problem? And in this, I introduce our subject for today. Tell my people to return to me is still our thing. We are just looking at different areas and different dimensions in which we may have missed God. You see, 
in Matthew chapter 16, there is something that the Bible records concerning Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 1. He says, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Jesus was asking them a question. He's asking the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, can't you discern the signs of the times? Put another way, with all your learning from the scriptures which you read so much, can't you discern what God is up to, what God is doing, what time it is, not time of the clock now, but what time in God's scheme of things. Can't you discern what time it is? He's asking the Jewish leaders. Can't you discern? What was the justification for this position of Jesus? I already mentioned some of it. They are the Jewish leaders. They are the custodian of knowledge, as it were. Knowledge of and from the scriptures. And Jesus is challenging them with that knowledge. Can't you discern the sign of the times? Haven't you, from your knowledge of scripture, come to know how to decode what God is doing in this time? And because of that, he called them hypocrites. So what was the problem? In Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible tells us that God rules in the affairs of men. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the Bible tells us that there is a time and a season for everything. In other words, at any given time, God is up to something. Time to be born, time to die, time to love, time to eat, time to go to school, time to die. Things like that. There is a time for everything. Otherwise, we will misapply ourselves. Jesus is challenging them with the times and the seasons, as it were, of God. You are supposed to be the custodians of that which pertains to God. Pharisees and Sadducees. How come you can't discern what God is doing now? And in asking this of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I am asking you on the other side of this camera watching me. How come you can't discern what God is up to per time? Did, or does the Bible not say that we have been given the Holy Spirit so that we may know what is freely given? So if you really had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, somehow he will lead you according to the times and the seasons, either of your life specifically as an individual, or generally concerning the church, or even your nation. So what's the problem? We begin to see why God is saying, tell my people to return to me. Primarily the problem is that we are not in tune with God. So we can discern what's going on. Daniel 4, 17 tells us that God rules in the kingdoms of men. What's the kingdom? Let's change the word kingdom to affairs. God rules in the affairs of men. 
the things about which men are exercised. God rules in them. Now, not only that he rules, Genesis 1 and verse 14 says, and I read, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. In other words, God put the lights in the sky, which we call stars now. God put the lights in the, star, in the skies for times and for seasons. For days and for years. What's days and years? Time. For seasons and for days and for years. So how did the wise men, as it were, know that somebody special had been born? They were stargazers. They were knowledgeable in the science of the stars. For example, for example. Now today, we will call that horology. Stargazing or something like that. So God put the stars up there, the moon, the sun, all of them are stars actually. Just different sizes, different functions. So God put the lights up there to determine our times and seasons, to help us understand the times and the seasons. Why is God interested in our times and our seasons because he relates with us based on times and seasons so there are seasons with god and time generally merges with certain seasons we know that from all just the feasts passover pentecost tabernacle and all the others the day of atonement So God has what we now call God's calendar, which he gave to Israel. And that calendar was pretty specific. At certain times, at certain days of the year, they were to be engaged in certain things. Now, those are supposed to be like the feasts, physical, although with spiritual connotations. So God, ab initio, made it clear that in the business of ruling in the affairs of men, he was going to structure it into times and seasons. Certain people had the wisdom for certain things. The wise men from the East had the wisdom about understanding the stars. The children of Issachar, we are told, had understanding with the times. And they knew what Israel ought to do. So in Matthew chapter 16, where Jesus said to them, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the sign of the times? Where were the children of Issachar during the time of Jesus? That family, whether by generational transfer or by learning in instruction, they understood the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do. With that family was... Let's call it anointing, grace, gift, discernment for the times and the seasons. Had they done their work or their job, they would have decoded that they were in the time of the Messiah. They would have decoded it. Why do I say that? Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, that when the fullness of time came, God manifested his son, born of a woman. So Jesus was manifested in the fullness of time. So long as it had relationship with fullness of time, the children of Issachar in Israel would have known about it because theirs was wisdom pertaining to times and seasons knowing what Israel ought to do. Now, those are physical people of God. We are spiritual. We have been given the Holy Spirit so that by the Holy Spirit, 
we can know. Why did Jesus call the Sadducees and the Pharisees hypocrites? Who is a hypocrite, by the way? Or what is a hypocrite? Claiming to be what you are not. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the leaders of the people, but they had no eyesight, no vision for leading. He says, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. One thing about leadership is the business of vision and ability to discern the signs of the times. Otherwise, how are you going to lead the people? So they were blind men leading the blind. They looked like leadership, but they had no sight. They had no understanding of the times. So he called them hypocrites. You should not be in leadership positions if you cannot discern the times so that you can lead the people aright. Now the Bible says that we were given the Holy Spirit so that we may know. So that we may know. It was not in the plan of God that we be in the dark. We are not children of the dark. So how come we don't know? So how come we are thrashing about like people in the dark? How come we are walking aimlessly and we cannot key into what God is doing part time? If we could, God will not be saying, tell my people to return to me. Now many of us are complaining that the darkness in the world has come inside the church. Why is that? I asked God about 25 years ago. So this is not a today problem. It's been there for a while. And he says to me, the reason there appears to be darkness in the church, or anywhere for that matter, is because the light that I put in the earth is not shining. And who is the light of the world? The church! So once again, we are like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They are supposed to be the leaders of the people, but they can't discern the signs, the times. Today, the church is supposed to be the light of the world, but there's darkness everywhere. Because there is no light in us. Had there been light in us, we would have known, for example, that Christ is about to return. We would have known, for example, a certain quickening in the spirit as the Holy Spirit begins to get the body ready, calling us back to our place so that we are not found wanting when the Master comes. So he begins to say now, tell my people to return to me. Are we discerning enough to even hear the call in this message? He called them hypocrites. You are supposed to be leading the world as the light. Otherwise, how can anybody see when there is no light? So whatever is happening in the world is simply because the, world, the light is not shining. When that light was shining, do you know what the stubborn people of the world said? He said, these people who have turned the world upside down, they have come here again. Why did it look like they were turning the world upside down? Because light was shining and the darkness could not comprehend it. Does it look like anybody calling the church, these people who have turned the world upside down have come here again? Does it look like that today? So God is calling us back to our place of light where we can discern the times so that we can know what to do at time. Otherwise, we will be taken away, unawares. Like Jesus said, that the day of his coming is going to be for some like a day of the thief who comes in the middle of the night. Why did he say night? A period of darkness. 
where everybody is asleep. And so nobody is on guard. Nobody is prepared. Nobody is watching out. In other words, in the day of his coming, we are supposed to be on guard. We are supposed to be watching. We are supposed to be awake, at least to righteousness. That's the only way it will take us by surprise. But as it is, if Jesus were to come tonight, what do you think will happen? So he called them hypocrites. And I imagine today, we still behave like them. Not able to discern the signs of the times. So God is calling to his people, return! Return! So that light can even shine in you. And then so that in turning to the world, you can at least light up your world and begin to show your world the way. But first, we must return. So he says, tell my people to return to me. Perhaps beginning tomorrow, we begin to look at specifics about the times and the seasons of God. Generally, as pertaining to the church, but more specifically about us the individuals. There is a time to be born. There is a time to crawl. There is a time where you must be standing. There is a time where you are a toddler. There is a time they call under fives. There is a time they call preteen, teen, pubescent, young adult, adult, middle age. These are seasons of the life of the average individual, every individual. And even our bodily changes indicate those times. But that's the physical. Can we discern what's happening in the realm of the spirit? To do that, we've got to return to what God gave us. You have been given the Holy Spirit that you may know. So we'll be back again tomorrow on another edition of this series of broadcasts. As I imagine we begin to look at the signs of the times. God says to his people, return. And the time is now. <laughs>